how do you keep yourself up to date in your specialty? Does it sometimes feel like other people are aware of papers that have recently come out that you haven't heard of? How do you navigate the hundreds or thousands of journals that come out each month, any one of which might have some information in that you need to know to help your patient? Now, you might read your given specialty journal that comes through the door every month when you're sitting on the loo, but the chances are the stuff you need to know isn't always going to be in your journal. It could be in one of hundreds of other journals. And these published papers are known as the primary original research. Nobody has time to read all of the primary original research coming out each month. I try to find and read as much of this as possible. It's painful and I don't have a perfect system, but I will show you in a future video how I try to do that. But I'm not as smart as some of my colleagues who don't go to the primary research they rely on others to read this for them, and they therefore read secondary pre appraised research. They read synopses of recent studies that are written by smart people who have thought about it, who have critically appraised the papers to see if they're any good from a science point of view, and then publish their opinion on whether it's applicable to their and potentially your practice. So this is the smart way of doing it. I'm gonna show you some secondary sources of evidence that are really good that you can visit or you can use what's called an aggregator to deliver these summaries to you. So the first one is the Resus Room. Coming out of England, this is a fantastic podcast which has regular reviews of papers relevant to resuscitation and critical care. They also do regular subject summaries from roadside to Resus but they do specifically address recent papers that are relevant to resuscitation and critical care. The next one is First 10 EM. This one also has a number of interesting blog posts, but in addition, we'll have a research roundup for each month so that you don't miss the important stuff in the literature. Rebel EM also assesses all the important papers that seem to come out relevant to emergency medicine and resuscitation. St. Emlyn's also contains a number of reviews of important papers that come out, as well as a vast amount of other useful emergency medicine education. But there'll be a roundup of important papers and potentially practice changing research. If you do pediatric emergency medicine, then the Don't Forget the Bubbles website has a section called Bubble Wrap, and Bubble Wrap will have at least a monthly summary of relevant papers to do with paediatric emergency medicine. For resuscitation and critical care, really thorough critical appraisals of intensive care literature, which includes a lot of resus-related stuff, are regularly published. This is my go-to if I want to deep dive on a paper and get an expert perspective on how well the science was done in this paper. And in keeping with the title of the website, there is always a bottom line take home message for each paper if you don't have time to read the full critical appraisal. So that's just a small number of some of the free sites. If you go to the legendary MCRIT website, everything resuscitation and critical care is here. Fantastic education with my friend Scott Weingart's take on it. Now, there's a free option and a paid option. If you want the literature reviews, you have to subscribe to MCRIT, which is well worth it and recommended. Another paid option that some people like is the New England Journal of Medicine Journal Watch, and you can choose your specialty. I personally don't use this. I think the emergency medicine one doesn't have a great focus on resuscitation and critical care, uh, misses some important things, and also includes papers that I'm not particularly interested in. It's also relatively expensive. So I'm including it because some of my colleagues like this, but uh, it's not something that I use. My absolute favorite that I've come to rely on is Critical Care Reviews, produced by Rob McSweeney in Northern Ireland. This is just an incredible resource. If you go to the website, click on latest evidence, Rob just doesn't seem to miss any of the important stuff that comes out. And every week, there'll be many, many papers categorized into the type of study that it is, 
that you might find interesting or relevant to resuscitation and critical care. Nothing important seems to be missed. And in fact, I was going to record this video a few days ago. And when I got to this page, I found a paper I hadn't seen, which I then read about and ended up doing a video on that instead. Rob will email you a weekly newsletter that summarizes everything. This is a paid part of the service, but it's extremely inexpensive and it's a small amount of money to ask to help Rob manage this website and continue to provide this incredible service. So I will read this newsletter every week, click on the links and explore some of these papers that I might otherwise not have found. So you can pay just £2.50 a month for this or express your gratitude by becoming a supporter at one of these levels. Now to save time and not having to visit all these blogs and podcasts yourself, you can use an aggregator like Feedly. Go to feedly.com, sign up for a free account and just add the websites that you want to include. It will then list each new post from all of those sites in one place and that can be your go-to. There is a smartphone app where Feedly will provide all this stuff on your phone. So rather than reading your journal when you're sitting on the loo, you can be swiping through the Feedly aggregate of all the stuff you should be reading. So that's how you can find these synopses of studies. If you want to go higher up in secondary pre appraised research and read summaries of topics that are kept up to date, then the appropriately named up to date can be very helpful. So one way of keeping up to date is when you see a patient like the hyperosmolar hyperglycemic patient I saw last night, you can go to up to date and look it up. This is a paid subscription, but many institutions will provide access to this. And then of course, a free resource that's kept pretty up to date is life in the fast lane. This is a go to for many of us in emergency medicine and critical care, and it's got a fantastic review kept up to date of so many topics. Life in the Fast Lane really is a fantastic place to go for general education in all the things we're interested in. There's more than just topic updates, and uh, I think probably everybody watching this video already knows about Life in the Fast Lane. Now, I haven't mentioned some other incredible evidence-based medicine resources that are out there. I'm sure you will know many there are other places you can go for deep dives on really, really interesting papers that you might not otherwise have found. If you think I've missed out an important one that you want to share, please let me know in the comments. I hope this was helpful. I hope this will save you time by selecting a few sources of secondary evidence and aggregating them in an app that you can access on a regular basis. If you want to spend some smart money, then subscribing to MCRIT if you're a resuscitationist and critical care reviews, newsletter, just those two things will make you miles ahead of your colleagues in being up to date in resuscitation. If you want to know how to efficiently access the primary literature yourself, which I do not recommend because I spend too many hours doing that, then I will show you how I go about trying to do that in another video. Thanks for watching.